6th grade math with Mr. Anderson. Hello kids, today we'll be multiplying two or more fractions. So to understand this, I like to think of pi. Some of you had pi over Christmas break or winter break. Some of you had pi over Thanksgiving. And you probably had some left over, right? And so let's say your pi here, you have one fourth of the pi left. Okay, that's the shaded part. One fourth. The rest of it is gone. It is eaten. And you want to share it uh, with one other person. So you're going to divide this in half. Well, it's kind of funny I'm saying divide when we're multiplying, right? Because dividing by two is the same as saying multiplying by a half. Okay, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. So if I divide what's left here in half, okay, how many pieces or what fraction of the pie would you get? So I see I have this red part shaded. Well, I'm going to have to divide all of these, okay, in half, all these fourths by 2 or multiply times 2. And as you can see, now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One out of eight pieces you can have, and your friend can have the other eight of a piece. Now, so what are we doing here? Well, this is a little bit easier uh, than yesterday, I think. You multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 2 is 8. Look, you get 1 8 of that pi. Now, I use this quite a bit, multiplying fractions when I cook. Okay, It's probably where you're going to use it the most when you're cooking or baking. So let's say you've got this recipe it makes way too much, more than you can eat, so you want to half the, everything on the recipe. Okay, Now if a recipe calls for three-fourths of a cup of, oh I don't know, flour. Okay? And you want a half that. How are you going to find half of three-fourths? Well, you multiply it by one over two. And so what is half of three-fourths? You multiply straight across and you would be putting in three-eighths of a cup of flour if you find half of the recipe. Okay? So, as you can see, we're just multiplying straight across. So on this one, you multiply straight across. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 5 is 15. Can you simplify that? Nope. So what goes into 4? 2 and 4, and 2 and 4 does not go into 15. So your answer is 4 fifteenths. Oh boy, look at this one. Okay, this one's going to be a little more difficult, it looks like. 1 times 8 is 8. I multiply across. 12 times 15. Well, I can't do that in my head. So I multiply that. Get 10, 5, 6. Put my 0 in. 2, 1. 8 over 180. But that's not in simplest form, is it? So what am I going to divide by? Um, well, I know 2 goes into both because they're even. I divide by 2. The top and bottom. When I do the top, I do the bottom. So that would be 4. 180 divided by 2. Well, I know that's 90. I can do that mentally. Otherwise... Write it down. Put down to zero, ninety, and if you look again, it's still not in simplest form. So I have to divide again. 
divide by 2, and that's 2, divide by 2, 90 divided by 2, 8, subtract 1, bring down to 0, 5, 45. So after all of that, I get 2 45ths. But you know what? There's got to be an easier way. It has to be on this one. And you know what? There is. So you better pay close attention unless you want to do all of that work I just showed you. Okay? So we started doing this yesterday. You might have heard me say, simplify before you multiply. And we can simplify before we multiply. So if we look at a number on the bottom and a number on top, okay, or in this case, the diagonals, right? The diagonal. We can simplify 8 and 12, okay? Now, what goes into both 8 and 12 evenly? It has to be the same number. Well, that's 4. I can divide both of those by 4. That's how I'm going to simplify it. So I'm going to cross this out. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. Right? And then I'm going to divide 8 by 4. How many 4 has been in 8? That's 2. Now if I look at this diagonal, I've got a 1 and 15. I can't simplify that. Okay? So now I have... It's getting kind of messy. Sorry about that. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 15. Let's see, 15, it was like three steps, right? 15, 30, 45. Now, wasn't that much easier? Okay, so if you can simplify before you multiply, here's the deal. You will get it in simplest form every single time. If you simplify before you multiply. Okay, because on your IXLs, I need it in simplest form. Okay, if I see you're not putting in simplest form, I might have to give you an extra assignment, and you don't want that, right? You want it in simplest form. So, this one. So before I multiply straight across, I'm going to check. Can I simplify before I multiply? I check, check the 7 and the 2. One's on top, one's on the bottom. And... See, 2 goes into 2, but 2 doesn't go into 7. So I can't simplify those two. Check the 6 and the 3 the diagonals here. And yes, 3 goes into 3, so I can divide by 3. How many 3's fit into 3? 3 divided by 3 is 1. I'll do the same to the top here. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now I'm in simplest form. Now I can just multiply straight across. 2 times 2 is 4. 7 times 1 is 7. 4 sevenths is my answer, and it's already in simplest form. Okay? Now look at this one. This would take quite a long time if I didn't simplify it. So let's start with the 16 and the 8. Let's see. Well, 2 goes into both. What else goes into 8? 4. You can make it divide by 4. What about 8? That would be better, right? 8 divided by 8 is 1. I'll just put that down there. Dividing by 8. How many 8s fit into 16? Well, that'd be 2. That makes it a little bit easier. But can I simplify this one and this one? Absolutely. I now can divide that by 5. How many 5's fit into 5? 1. How many 5's fit into 15? 5, 10, 15, that's 3. Now I can just multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 6 is my answer. Okay, try this one. Uh, push pause when you got it, push play, and we'll check. Okay, so I can simplify my 7s. 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into 7 once. And then my 3 and my 9 here, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 
9 divided by 3 is 3, right? Now I can multiply straight across, 1 third. Okay, see how simplifying before you multiply makes things a lot easier. Okay, try this one. Uh, pause it, push play when you have it. Remember, simplify before you multiply. Okay, I can't simplify the 5 and the 9. Now, a lot of you notice on the 8 and the 4, you can divide by 4. Well, let's say you didn't notice that, you divided by 2. Okay, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And you have to look again. Now I've got a 4 and a 2. They're both even, I can divide again. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay? And then you get, multiply straight across, 5 eighteenths. Okay? Um, 4 ninths. But again, we've been way quicker. Divide by 4 right away. 1, 2, and we've got a 5. Okay, try this one. Push play when you have it. Okay, so I can simplify here. So the 4 and the 10. I can divide that by 2 because they're even. Now that's 5. Now that's 2. Now I can't simplify it anymore. Multiply straight across. 6. 25ths. Right? Good deal. What happens when you multiply three numbers? Well, you still want to simplify before you multiply. Okay? So if I look on here, notice my 3 and my 6, right? I can divide that by 3. So cross that out, make it a 1. Cross that out, make it a 2. Now I have to look. I've got two here, I've got ones on top, oh, ones on top. Well, that makes it easier, so you do one times one times one. That's one. At the bottom, you do two times five times two, right? Two, five, and two. That's ten times two is twenty. One twentieth. Okay? Ah, uh, this one. I'll give you a hint here. I'll start you off, I want you to finish. Push, pause, push, play. We can simplify two places. What I would do is I would do the 5 and the 10 first. Because they are diagonal. And one's on the bottom, one's on top. So make that 1. Because you're dividing by 5, right? 5 fits into both. Make that 2. I want you to finish off the problem. Make sure you simplify one more time. Go ahead. So 2 fits into this uh, 2 times. 2 fits into this 1 time. Multiply straight across. 1 times 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 times 11. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 11 is 22. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? You do this, let's make sure you do it now. It's 111, right? What I should have done is the two here and the two here. Two fits in that once, two fits into that once. Now if I multiply straight across, I have one times one times one, which is one. And then one times one times eleven. That's eleven. Huh. See, even I make mistakes sometimes, but at least I caught it. Um, I would have gotten the right answer either way. Just an extra step there. Try this one. Push play when you have it. All right. So 4, I'm going to rewrite as 4 over 1. Oh, there are a couple different ways you can simplify here. I'm just going to make my 2 simplified. 1 and 1. Straight across. 4 over 3 which equals 1 and 1 third. All right. 
If you have any questions on your IXLs, talk to me in class. Thank you.